So I like to mountain bike. My son mountain bikes with me. We like to get out and everything. But I, you know, you try to invite the wife along. She can't keep up with me and my son. She just can't do it. Um, so I started seeing these electric bikes, and I was like, eh okay, it's an electric bike. It's, you're not gonna get any exercise out of that. And then I started thinking about it. One, it would allow my wife to keep up with me, and she does. Matter of fact, I can't keep up with my wife while she's running this thing up the hill. I cannot keep up with her on my mountain bike. Um, but I was looking at it more for um, not just recreation, but you know, I got all kinds of little evil ideas for these things. And just, you know, for hunters to be able to get out to their hunting stands. And you, you got your survival guys, all your preppers out there. Um, but the more I thought about it, it's like, yeah, it's okay. But, you know, you need things to be small. And there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of your survival crowd, they talk about having bug out bikes and having, uh, you know, just bicycles as another means of transportation. I agree with that. Okay, that's fair. I got a mountain bike. I love my mountain bike. But then I saw this one. Uh, it's called the Cinch by Avantin. Uh, you go to Avantin eBikes, uh, Avantin.com. Um, you notice it's got this weird one-piece frame right here. It's because of this puppy. The tires are smaller. They're ballooned. It's great for going sand and mud, stuff like that. But this puppy folds. It literally folds and stores down to nothing. I can fold this bike in half. Literally fold it in half. I'm gonna put it back together just because I like having it where I can get to it. But not only does it fold in half, you can fold down the handlebars, you can fold in the pedals, literally. You fold these things in, and what you end up getting is a very, very small package that will fit inside the trunk of that car, literally. Uh, you can put it in the trunk, you can put it in the back seat of that vehicle, you can put it up on that roof rack. And uh, that's, that's all fine and dandy. It's got this cool little screen right here. Now, a lot of your, a lot of your bikes, a lot of your e-bikes, everybody understands they pedal them, right? You pedal those bikes. But this little screen right here, what I love about this thing is it's got what's called pedal assist. Now, there's five different levels of it. All right, so what it equates to is my wife should pedal, try to hang out with me, but she can hit that button, bring it up to pedal assist, level one and she's just pedaling right along but the motor starts to kick in right now they say it's got a 40 mile average range now for my survival guys out there or my hunters or just my recreational people 40 miles doesn't seem like much range okay but notice they use the word average so um i've never had it run dead because i'll run it i'll take it out the whole day i'll run it through the woods take it hunting whatever it is and I've never had it die, but surely somebody has. So I, what I did, I actually went and did my homework on it, looked it up, and pedal assist level one, it's what I've got it on right now. You basically, uh, well, with no pedaling at all, um, literally just using, just literally just using the throttle. You don't have to pedal if you don't want to, all right? Understand, you don't have to, it has a throttle. If you're not pedaling at all, uh, you're still going to get 30 miles range with that. That's a long ways. 30 miles is a long ways. But if you have it on pedal assist level one, you're going to get 10 miles per hour max speed, right? Um, you're looking 71 mile range, right? And then you go to pedal assist level two, you can go up to 13 miles an hour, drops down to 64, and it keeps going down and down and down till you get to level five. Catch this, at level five, this puppy will run 20 miles an hour and you still get 38 miles range. 38 miles, right? Um, 20 miles an hour may not sound like uh, you're going very fast, but imagine running not just roads, sidewalks, let's start looking gravel roads, let's start looking deer trails, running across cornfields or wheat fields so you can get to that deer stand um, or getting, get away from something, get to another location, 
20 miles an hour, you are hauling tail. You really are. So I, it just blew me away that these things had that range. So you're looking at a 20 mile an hour top speed on this thing. Now, um, if you're just a recreational guy, like I, like I mentioned, my family to keep up on with me while I'm out riding around, we take this thing, we bring it to the campsite with us. Be out with the Jeep, you got the camper behind it. This is fun for just tooling around the campsite. It's just fun for just getting out in the woods and enjoying nature. Um, I'd rather be hiking. I would, okay? But not everybody wants to get out and hike through the woods. Here's my evil little ter turn for this bike. Overland Challenge, you guys know I do these competitions with my Jeep, okay? So one of the things that we have to do is we've got to drive that Jeep up onto the mountain and you've basically got land nav points you've got to find all up on the mountain. You get there, you mark them with your phone on the GPS and you've got your points. But a lot of times you'll get those Jeeps climbing the rocks and everything. You get to a location where one of those points will be a kilometer further up through a little trail in the woods that you can't get to with that Jeep. Well, for the last four or five years, we've always had to get out and run with the phone and the GPS, get it synced, get our point, run all the way back to the Jeep. And I was like, there's got to be a better way. I can't climb those rocks and those trails on my mountain bike. I, I just can't do it. I, I don't have enough oomph to do it. Enter the cinch. This puppy folded down in the back of the Jeep real easy, pull it off the back of the Jeep, snap it open, lock it, lock the handlebars, hit the power button, and run that puppy all the way up to five. <coughs> all of a sudden, you're Superman pedaling up this thing. Quickly shoot in there, get that point, come back out. So what it gave me was a capability that I didn't have. I didn't have it earlier. Uh, so it's decent. Now, I'm, I'm, so for recreation, this is a no-brainer for me. For my hunters out there, uh, when you start, uh, my deer hunters or my elk hunters, let's say deer hunters, right? Uh, deer season kicks off uh, late August for my bow hunters and then November time frame, October, November for my rifle hunters. When you're going out to that stand, like I like to hunt morning, so I like to go out there right before sunrise the biggest thing you're having to hide is one, the sound you're making, the deer hearing you walk through, but also more importantly, the scent. When you walk across that field, the deer may not even be out in that field yet, right? But wherever you walk, you're leaving human scent on the field there, wherever you touch, okay? Wherever you touch, you're leaving that human scent. Now, um, a lot of hunters, they'll take that four-wheeler, that little ATV with that loud exhaust. They'll drive it all the way. They'll park it underneath their tree. They're going to hunt from. Every deer for three miles around saw you park your truck, turn off your headlights, and then they heard your four-wheeler start up and drive across the field to your stand. Not with this e-bike. With this e-bike, literally, you get on and hit that throttle, guys. Hit that throttle. You're not making much noise. Scourge. Stop up underneath your tree. Your feet have never touched the ground. You're not laying human scent out everywhere. Now, when I get there, I, I haven't made a lot of noise. My scent is nowhere except for where I'm getting off at my tree. And um, so it's allowed me to move silently across the battlefield. Right? And uh, that's important to me. Now, so how do you camouflage a big bike? Because technically, I could use my mountain bike to do that. Ah, remember, this puppy folds down to nothing. I can just throw a little uh, backpack liner over the top. But uh, what do we do as hunters? What do we do? What we like to do is we like to spray paint everything. So that was the plan. The plan was I was going to just spray paint this thing, you know, earth tones. Yeah, my wife wasn't having any of that because she loves this bike. Dude. She loves it. So something I picked up from the film crew is film crew use what's called gaff tape. We have rolls of black gaff tape. I get a little piece right here holding my microphone inside my shirt. Cool part about gaff tape is it doesn't stick in Mars surfaces. You can stick it on and it comes right off. The other cool part I found out is you can go to Amazon and you can get your black gaff tape. You can get it in camouflage rolls, tan, uh, tan camouflages, um, green rolls, everything else. You start laying this tape up all over the bike. But other things you can do is 
um, for my paramedics out there, cobands. We use cobands for holding dressings on, stuff like that. Guys, you can literally just start wrapping this stuff up and guys, this stuff comes off. Now, what I like about this stuff is literally it sticks to itself but I can go around wheels. I can wrap this stuff and weave it all around those pretty spokes. Actually wrap it around the rubber on the tires and guys, it comes right off. The stuff literally comes right off the bike. Doesn't hurt it at all. So anyways, it, I found it worked for me for deer season. I'm gonna pull this. See how easily this stuff comes off. It sticks great, does not mar nothing. The hardest part, of making this video today was literally trying to get most of the mud off of the bike. That was, that was the hardest part, still in great shape. All right, um, so I stash it near my tree stand, literally fold it up real quick. I got a backpack cover, camouflage, but it's kind of like a small piece of poncho, and that's what I throw over it, sitting at the bottom of the tree. Do they make racks for the back of it uh, to haul your gun? I guess I could I could put a gun rack on my wife's handlebars. I could do that. But the reality is I don't need it. Ride that bike, drive there, and I got my herbal stack bag that's got my, uh, it's got the straps on it for holding my rifle. I got my fanny pack. I can carry all my stuff out there. I don't need to put fancy racks and stuff on it just to transport my bow or my gun. Now, for my survival crowd out there, uh, if you're planning on making this your full-blown bug-out vehicle one, I would recommend a Suburban or a Jeep. But um, if this is the way you want to go, they Advanton does sell bike racks for it. The other thing I thought was pretty cool is they have trailers for it, a number. They got, I, I want to say it's like a dozen different types of trailers. So whether you're hauling a baby behind you, hauling your dog, Flat, uh, they've got uh, surfboard racks, literally everything. I, small trailer, I got the one for hauling the dog, but it's enclosed enough that I could pack that with tons of gear and stuff. It's there. Um, trailer, there's no limit to the amount of stuff that you could haul with this bike. Um, what about extending that range, right? Because we're looking at um, 71 miles, right? Because my survival guys are wanna go, they're gonna wanna go further than that. The battery, guys, is literally just up here inside, all right? You've actually got a key to allow you to get your battery out of your bike. Nobody can steal your battery, all right? But uh, the cool part is the battery can be charged while it is on the bike. Literally, the charging port's right here on the side. But you can actually take the battery out and charge it. Just plug the, plug the little charger into it. Nice little charger, plug your battery in. But because the battery is removable for my survival guys out there, you could carry an extra battery. You could carry an extra two batteries, extra three batteries. Guys, that's extending your range. A battery is not that big, it's not. It's about the half the size of a uh, five pound fire extinguisher. Now, about the batteries, they're 500 bucks a piece. You're getting deep, uh, deep into the pockets, but you've got to think about that. Um, $500 having that in your backpack to give you an extra 70 miles range on this thing. I might want to keep it, might want to keep it in mind, keep it in the bag of tricks. As far as recharging it, I mentioned, uh, I showed you the charger, literally plug it into the wall. Um, my, uh, those little battery packs, the portable battery packs, a lot of people keep them in their vehicles. We did a, vi a video earlier about one uh, made by Blue Yeti. Uh, it's great. It will easily charge this bike a number of times. Uh, can you do it solar? You can do it solar. Just understand if you've got over at cast day, you may be sitting on your butt for a couple of days to get it charged. What about pedaling it while uh, charging it while you pedal? Does that work? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't. There are a couple um, electric bikes out there that they say that you can recharge by pedaling. Uh, there is more like... Um, retardant braking uh, recharges it. This is not one of those bikes. That don't even waste your time trying to say, well, I'll just charge it up pedaling. Not, nah, don't, don't plan on doing that. So um, for me though, hands down, the easiest and most important thing for me, why I went with this electric bike is because yeah, the tires are a little smaller. They're fatter than the ones on the mountain bikes. Uh, but this bike folds up and it takes very, very little space. 
It'll fit in the trunk of my son's car. It will fit in the back seat of my daughter's car. It will easily go up on the roof rack of my trailer or my Jeep. Uh, it, it just, it's awesome the way I look at it. So anyways, before you write off electric bikes, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you this one's a joy. It's a joy to just tool around the campsite. From a recreational standpoint, uh, it's fun. It is fun. For exercise, I'm gonna take my mountain bike every day of the week. Uh, but recreational, the added benefits that it can give me a hunting or survival situation, don't just write them off, just don't. Um, another tool to have in that toolbox, you can check them out, avanton.com. I got an affiliate code for it, I'll put it underneath the video. I'm sorry I couldn't get you a discount code. But um, the prices are definitely right on these things already at their website. They do sales from time to time. They've got a lot of bonuses for parts and accessories. Good stuff indeed. Eventon.com. Come on out and ride with us. That's all I got. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.